Look at this amazing blouse. It's full of super delicate details, some gathers, some binding. The sleeve has a cuff and a continuous bound placket as an extra detail with some gathers. It's a perfect design for silk fabric, 100% silk. Silk fabric is the topic for today, so stay here with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today's episode is a little bit about silk. Now maybe you have some silk in your fabric collection. I'm talking about 100% silk. I usually sew with fabrics that look like silk and feel like silk. They can actually create polyester fabrics that look very much like silk, but they really aren't. I do have a small to medium sized collection of 100% silk fabrics. I've been collecting those for a pretty long time. They're mainly solids. I have a few prints in there. And the only reason I haven't been sewing with them is because I haven't washed them. <laughs> the garment I showed you just a few minutes ago is a Rhapsody blouse. This is a pattern from Love Notions that I believe is the most popular pattern ever and once a year it goes on a feature Friday sale which means it's only five dollars that is over 60 percent off the regular price and that is today <laughs> that means that today is a discounted day for this pattern I have already made it eight times in the past I started making it in 2019 I've used all types of fabrics like chiffon different weights of chiffon crepe rayon all sorts and I've made a lot of the sleeve options there are about nine sleeve options here. I'm showing you here on the side a few images of my previous versions. I will leave in the description box all the resources I have on the Rhapsody, all the videos, there's a playlist and also a super complete blog post that contains all of them. Of course, there's my affiliate link as well. If you want to use that to get your Rhapsody, I make a little commission from that sale, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. So the silk one I gave you a sneak peek of is my ninth Rhapsody blouse. And I did a little extra to the sleeve. I used the long bishop sleeve, which would have a casing here with an elastic. But instead of just doing that, I added a cuff and a continuous bound placket. In yesterday's video, I showed you a tutorial on how to do that. And I showed you the sneak peek of my silk. So go ahead and catch up with yesterday's video if you want to learn how to do something like this. You can add that detail to a sleeve that doesn't have it. I'll show you my Silk Rhapsody blouse in a little bit. But first, I want to show you the fabric. It's beautiful. It's super lightweight. It's silk chiffon, 100% silk. There's no other type of fiber in there. It's got a slight sheen to it. It's very light, very floaty. I really want to discuss about how you could treat this at home without having to take it to the dry cleaners. Now a lot of people will say that you can't actually wash silk and it's partially true. It just depends on what your intent is with the garment. For example, if it's a wedding dress that will be worn once, if it's a super super special piece that is mainly going to be worn once, maybe you're not going to wash that fabric and you're going to sew it straight as it is because usually silk has a sort of texture and sheen and shine. The feel of it can sort of change when you go through the clean cleansing process whether it be dry clean or washing with water so if it's a one-of-a-kind special garment that you're gonna wear once maybe don't wash your fabric just use it like it is and then consider dry cleaning it in the future that is one option it's not what I would choose I would want to make blouses that I want to wear and just keep wearing uh, plenty of times. I don't really believe in making things that you're gonna wear once other than a wedding dress. So I wanna wear my garments a lot and I wanna care for them at home. And it is possible to care for your silk at home for sure. It does take a little while, not that it's hard, but it's not just doing the normal care that you do for your other fabrics. If you have decided that your silk garment is gonna be worn plenty of times, then let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how you can wash it. Because we are sewing, we are working with fabric that came from a bolt, could be dirty, could have chemicals. It is preferable to wash it so it can shrink a little bit and so it can have the final texture that the garment is gonna have once you wear it. It might become softer actually, but it can lose a little bit of the sheen that silk has now. Naturally, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of the sheen to be able to do this at home and not take my blouses to the dry cleaners. You know, it is a pretty expensive process, at least in my context. I live in a rural area. To find the dry cleaner, I'd have to go a lot of miles by car and that's just not a reason I would travel for, no. <laughs> If you actually buy some 100% silk clothing, maybe pillowcases, it could be a good idea to look inside at the care label. Now, some of them might have a bit of conflicting information in there. We also have the symbol for hand washing, no tumble drying, no bleach, cool iron, dry in the shade. But then one little aspect that is different between labels is some of them say washing cold water, some of them say 30 degrees. 
Most of them will say hand wash or dry clean. If you generally wash with warm water and it's really important to you, I think 30 degrees Celsius or 86, I think it is in Fahrenheit, is the highest you can go. So it's very, very lukewarm. I generally wash everything with cold water, so I wouldn't change my practice just because it's silk and because cold water is also perfectly fine for silk. So I would definitely hand wash in cold water, but if you want it warm, up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit would be okay. Silk is a natural fiber, it is sensitive to heat. So if you throw boiling water in there, it could just really help those fibers start disintegrating and just losing their shape. So definitely stay away from that hot water. Now, there are some people that are super adventurous and really want to wash their silks in the washing machine which i wouldn't recommend there are special products that could help you know mesh bags that you can put your garments in in this case you put your fabric in there if you don't have one of those you could use a pillowcase put your silk fabric in there put it in the machine on the most gentle cycle but i think even the most gentle cycle won't be gentle enough and what i worry here is the amount of time that the fabric will be in there wet because you want to avoid it being wet for a long time if you really want to wash them in the machine go ahead and try you know i i just wouldn't want to have my silk go torn up in there and just weakened in the long run it is an expensive fabric if you've made the effort to sew a garment which is considerably more than just buying a ready-to-wear silk item you know i would hand wash 100 percent now there's one little thing that you need to do before you hand wash that will let you know if you can hand wash actually that particular silk. If you've got really vibrant colors, you know, there is a small chance that that color could bleed and fade a lot. So just take a piece of white cotton, dampen one of the corners of your fabric and just rub it gently against your white cotton. Get it a little bit wet there and see what happens. If your cotton stays nice and white and crisp and there's no transfer of color, you know, you're pretty safe to wash it with water and just do your process. But if you have an amazing amount of transfer of that color onto the white cotton, you know, you could run the risk of your red silk turning pink and just you not ending with the nice color that you bought the fabric for. So in that case, I would just dry clean. I would sew my garment and just know that it's a special one that's going to get dry cleaned you know but if you've done your test and everything is perfectly fine then it's all good so in the example that i'm going to show you i did test my fabric this is a black silk it's got a little bit of print going on there very difficult to see the right and the wrong side of the fabric but i tested it very well to make sure that none of that black was going to transfer and i was going to end up with a gray silk because I didn't want it gray I wanted it black so just make sure you test what I'm saying is there is a chance that you might not be able to wash your fabric you know fading really bothers you it would be a dry cleaning type of garment another thing I wanted to discuss was the type of product that you're going to use you know typical detergents that you use for your regular wash you know involve washing polyester maybe cotton maybe linen that type of fiber those regular types of detergents usually use enzymes that break down proteins and fat that are contained in stains you know plus a vigorous you know movement in the machine you know that's what gets rid of the stains and gets you a clean garment right there are some fibers that are natural like wool and silk that are made out of proteins because they're made from you know sheep animals or worms so they are made in a different way mainly composed of proteins so if you use a regular detergent there that is going to break down proteins that is what is going to happen with your silk or wool fibers so that's why in the market there are special detergents for these types of fabrics just find the one local to your area i bought some online just a small little bottle i'm not going to talk what brand it is because it's totally out of context i'm in brazil you find your own special detergent but know that it also has to be a ph that's neutral around seven or higher than seven alkaline if it's an acid detergent with a ph lower than seven like 6.5 or 5.5 that really does not sit well with silk either so just make sure you check if you're buying a specialty type of detergent for silk then it should be okay now i have some footage here to show you how i treated my fabric the other day 
I just used the sink in my kitchen so I could film it for you. I just made sure that I cleaned the basin where I was gonna wash very, very well so that it was super, super clean. And I just filled it up with cold water. I just put a small amount of my specific detergent in there, mix it a little bit. There's no foaming, nothing like that. And I just put my fabric in there. You shouldn't have it in there for more than two or three minutes. It is not a lengthy process, especially because this is fabric that is just fabric. It hasn't been made into a garment yet. So you're not gonna have proper stains on it anyway. And you don't wanna shake it around and be super vigorous or just have a heavy hand with it. Don't bring it around and shake it around. Just move it up and down, up and down, super gentle, up and down. Do that for a few minutes, that is enough. Put it aside, clean your basin again, fill it up with nice clean water and rinse it. I did the process about two or three times always being super gentle maybe have some water flowing over the fabric to get rid of everything now some people say to put a tad of vinegar in there that helps remove all the residue of the product you're using i just hate the smell of vinegar and i just don't own any in my house so i'm never going to use it for that but you could if you wanted to and then some people even say you could use a drop of hair conditioner I don't believe in that. I just wash it with the special detergent that I have and that is plenty, that is enough. After that, I have a table behind me and I just laid out some pink towels. You know, it would have looked nicer if I had white towels, but I don't own any white towels. I don't believe in white towels either. <laughs> They're just clean towels. And I carefully laid my fabric on there as extended as it could, rolled up these towels into like a little worm and then I just pat them down, patting the towels down so that the towels could absorb as much as that water that was in the fabric. Now, take into account that this fabric is extremely lightweight, it's a chiffon. It's not gonna hold that much water because it's not much to the fabric anyway. I put a clean piece of just regular cotton on my table and I laid out my silk fabric right on top, as extended as possible, just making sure it's not hanging off the sides. This is inside, you know, I would not dry this out in the sun. <laughs> It could fade. You know, silk is not a fabric you dry on the grass. Like I showed you the other day, I was, I was drying rayon like that. And it was so easy. I mean, I went downstairs and checked like two hours later and it was already almost dry. It is a fabric that's gonna dry pretty quickly. At least mine did because it is chiffon, so it's extremely lightweight. Maybe a heavier one would take a little while longer, but it's not gonna take you forever. So you see, it's a little bit of a process. You do them one by one, mainly because of the space to dry them. Maybe if you had matching colors and a lot of space to dry them out like that, you could do several at a time. But I know for me, I would have to do them one by one. And I should, I should get started on that because I have a few beautiful fabrics in my collection that I really wanna use. I already have on the channel a really, really, really detailed video about how to work with silky fabrics. And it shows you everything about how to cut it, how to lay your fabric. It's really, really comprehensive. And 100% silk would totally be included in the fabrics that I'm talking about there. I discuss the type of thread, the type of needle, everything like that. So if you wanna know more about how to actually sew with it, go and watch that video. I will link it down below. Here is my Rhapsody blouse in 100% silk. For me, it was the same type of feel I have when I'm manipulating polyester chiffon. It was no different for me, only that this is much nicer and much more valuable. It's black and it's got some type of white print that looks like specks of paint on it. It's very beautiful. Here is a little V right there with binding. I have a video on my channel showing you how to do this V for this pattern. And here is the binding that goes all around the neckline there. You know, you know that there was hand basting involved. There was a lot of hand basting in this project. Totally worth it though. It's super neat. You can see the binding going all the way back. And on the back you have a yoke that's double, two layers. I use the two layers of silk right there. And on the center back from the back piece, there's supposed to be a box pleat, but I did gathers instead. I think gathers are more delicate for this type of fabric. Look how it just wants to fly away with the wind, it's so light. Then at the bottom, it's quite simple, you know, it's cut on the fold on the front and the back. I found these in my stash. Look, I don't know where they came from, but they were nice, so I put them there at the bottom. <laughs> but as I mentioned, I wanted to do something different to the sleeve. And I've shown you a video of how to do a continuous bound placket. Yesterday, I showed you that with another blouse with rayon. It was the same process for this one. That little opening there, I showed you where to place it on the pattern, how to extend that area. Once you do that little opening and slit, you sew your binding on, small seam allowance. After doing that, you flip the binding towards the front. 
hand base that of course to keep it neat and keep it from moving and that covers that raw edge of that slit then you sew it extended super easy and then you fold your sleeve right sides together you know aligning all this bound area and you do a little diagonal seam across the top voila it's so easy this is how it turned out i borrowed the cuff from the aria shirt also from love notions and there is my continuous bound placket it's so beautiful i tried to use a print that was a little contrasting there so that you could see it but it's so so pretty i put three buttons there that are sort of special buttons also <laughs> and for this one just because it's silk and because my hand fits through here i didn't do the buttonholes i just sewed the buttons right through I don't know why I would want to undo the buttonholes if my hand fits. So I thought it was worth just sewing the buttons right through. This is so beautiful. The bishop sleeve would have been gathered, we know, with an elastic, but this is gathered into a cuff and I think it looks so pretty. You know, if you're able to do this technique and add it to something, it will just be that more special to you. If you haven't tried the technique, I hope you do because it's really, really pretty and you can add it to a garment like this. I mean, there are nine sleeve options already, but I just added something extra to one of them and I'm really happy about that. Now I've done something like that before with this one, but this is a three quarter length bishop sleeve. And in this case, I just did a cuff that doesn't have any opening, but it is gathered into a cuff, which I like. This is a fitted cuff right here at my forearm, but not right here, it still fits. I can still pull it on without needing that opening there. This is one of my favorite ones. It is a heavier material. So I didn't do the binding here, I did a facing instead, so that little V shows there. This is the area that would be bound. This is a nice one, but I have many more. You know, this is my ninth and I'm super happy with it. It's so, so beautiful. Let's see it on. <laughs> this is the ninth Rhapsody blouse that I've ever made. This is 100% silk chiffon, very transparent, very simple styling over some wide leg pants. A cami underneath because it is totally sheer. I have the binding there on the neckline and the little V that I've always enjoyed. This is a great style for chiffon and I've added some extra cuffs to the long bishop sleeves you'll see up closer. I did add one and a half inches of length to my blouse so that it hits this length. This is what I prefer. And you can see how floaty and nice this is. It's got plenty of ease. If you sew with silk, you do need a garment that has ease. Here is a closer look at my cuff. And the excess of the bishop sleeve is gathered into there instead of an elastic casing. I have three buttons there. They are just sewn right through the cuff. And there is my continuous bound placket, which is an extra detail I added to the Rhapsody blouse. The Rhapsody doesn't have that detail, but you can add it on. And I do show you how to do that on my channel. And it's so gorgeous. I really like the depth of this neckline. I love that little V and the little ties you know you can just wear the ties loose or tie them up there if you want a little bit more cover but I think it's really nice and delicate the style is just so so pretty and I'm so happy I got to make it in this beautiful silk fabric Here is a closer look at the neckline, the gathers coming from the yoke and the back yoke that is double burritoed, it's all clean inside. I do have French seams everywhere so I really took my time to pull out all the stops to make this one super super duper special. There's another look at my continuous bound placket and then you can see the seam of the sleeve in there, it's all French seamed. I love that. So so very happy with my ninth Rhapsody blouse. I know I would make this one many more times because it's just so pretty. Using special fabrics on a tried and tested pattern is the best way to go. I was sure I was going to get amazing results with my silk. I hope this episode motivates you to look for some silk fabric. What I've done in the past also when I wanted silk is go to thrift shops. Sometimes you can find really nice garments made out of silk, maybe a few sizes larger than you that you can seam rip and just use as fabric. Those will probably already have been washed, who knows in what condition, so that is the risk. It is something that you can try to get your hand on how working with silk feels. 
without spending a lot of resources. You know, if it's a fail, you know, maybe it wasn't that expensive to begin with, but it will help you learn how to work with the fabric. I'm always looking out for 100% silk. It's so beautiful, so special, and I need to sew it more. I hope you'll see more of 100% silk in my channel. As you can see, it's not that hard to care for. It's not that hard to wash. You can do it at home. Just plan your time and your projects. You know, these are not things you want to be rushing with and just get them nicely washed and you'll be fine. This is a garment that I'll just hand wash it in the same way, exactly the same way I wash the fabric. I'll dry it in the exact same way. It'll be the same process. Don't forget to check out the Rhapsody today for $5. In the description box below, I'll leave you links to a playlist of all the videos I've made about the pattern and also a blog post has all of them. It's like a one click to everything right there in my blog post. Have an amazing weekend and I will see you again very soon. Bye.